with the gold cartel, you need participation of everyone in the cartel to keep the price suppressed because they all get to make a little money doing that. There is a natural buyer of gold. Gold always has a buyer. Central banks are always in the gold market. So you know pretty much that the demand for gold is pretty much omnipresent. There's always some demand for gold. If you can go into the market and manipulate prices using derivatives contracts, which in this case would mean counterfeiting sale orders to drop the price, the price discovery mechanism by counterfeiting and really and putting counterfeit sell orders into the market, which drives the price down, you have the ability then to just sit back, wait for the natural demand to come in, which there always is demand for gold, and then ride it on the way up again. And this seesaw back and forth is how the gold cartel is able to book, you know, one or two percent a, a, a week trading gold. But if you leverage that, you know, you're talking, you're making 30 or 40 percent a year, but really with no risk at all. Max Kaiser provides a compelling analysis on how the gold cartel operates, leveraging derivatives contracts to manipulate market prices while ensuring a steady profit with minimal risk. This manipulation, however, is not without its challenges, especially with the presence of a natural buyer, central banks, ensuring that gold's demand remains somewhat constant. But as we explore this complex interplay, let's not forget the rising star of the financial market, Bitcoin. Its unique attributes and potential to redefine money have sparked a revolutionary shift, posing a significant challenge to the gold cartel's dominance. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this fascinating topic. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Unscripted Crypto for more insightful content on the future of finance. The way that the cartel sustains itself is that everybody in the cartel knows that the possible risk to them would be a sudden price spike in the price of gold. Like it went from two to 20,000 in a day. If that were a possibility, then you would be very difficult to maintain a gold cartel because that risk would be very tempting for somebody to break the cartel and take advantage of that risk. You see that in OPEC all the time, it's the OPEC cartel. It's, it's hard to keep it going because there's always one player who breaks it and wants to just make an outsized gain against the cartel. And then they can say, well, let's go to war. And they go, no, let's bring the cartel back. Don't be such an idiot. And that's been going on really for 50 years. But with the Bitcoin price, because it's this new asset class that ultimately competes with gold, that means it's going to go from just under a trillion dollar market cap to $10 trillion market cap. You're talking about an asset that's at 40,000 could easily go to 400,000 in a relatively short period of time. So you don't want to be the guy in the cartel who's short Bitcoin when it's about to make a 10x move. So it's very difficult to maintain that cartel in a Bitcoin scenario because it's got that huge upside potential yet. And it also, because it's redefining money as we know it. Uh, so it's going to attract by the nature of this com new digital synthetic commodity, buyers um, are going to essentially rule price discovery. It's gonna be very difficult to keep a, 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 a sell order in this mix where you've got this upper trajectory of a new asset class where the total addressable market for Bitcoin is literally $400 trillion, which is the total market cap of all investable securities, stocks, bonds, property, all derivatives, all, all these things taken in an aggregate is at $400 trillion. So, and, and that is potentially the total market addressable market for Bitcoin. It can dis, it can, demonetize, I think it's already demonetizing gold, just like gold demonetized silver, right? Used to be on a bimetal standard, now we're on a gold standard. Silver got demonetized. Bitcoin is now demonetizing gold. It'll demonetize the property market. It'll demonetize the bond market. The bond market's a $200 trillion market. Bitcoin's not even at a 1 trillion. That's a 200 X right there. So to get back to the price suppression, of course there will be a lot of price discovery games being played with a lot of derivatives. But ultimately, unlike gold, uh, it'll have this natural upward bias. The second thing is that gold 
is is very difficult and nobody really wants to stand for delivery of gold. Yes. So in you're in the gold business, you know, it's all paper settled and it's all cash settled and people rarely would say, you know, I've got um, a, you know, a ton of gold in the market I'm bidding for, I'm going to take delivery of it. I'm not going to, the gold, you've got to ship it, you've got to insure it, you've got to store it, right? Moving gold around is very difficult, shipping it and storing it. With Bitcoin, because you don't have any of that cost whatsoever and you control the private key, any laddered manipulative price discovery edifice can be quickly destroyed by pulling your private key because it's the base level of any manipulative scheme, any Ponzi scheme, would have if it, you can pull it you know the whole thing collapses so that's a unique attribute of bitcoin which gold has uh, doesn't no nowhere comes close with that ability either as we peel back the layers of financial manipulation within the gold market it becomes evident that sustaining such a cartel is fraught with risks notably the potential for sudden price spikes the delicate balance of power within these cartels mirrors the challenges faced by organizations like opec constantly teetering on the brink of collapse due to the temptation of outsized gains. Enter the world of Bitcoin, a new asset class with the extraordinary potential to disrupt the status quo. Max Kaiser enlightens us on Bitcoin's trajectory, highlighting its ability to compete directly with gold, potentially escalating its market cap exponentially. You can move a billion dollars to $20 billion in Bitcoin uh, in, one, you know, in, a, in a transaction, one transaction that's completely frictionless, it's costless. It might cost five bucks to move a billion dollars. Uh, so these things work in its favor against a manipulative cartel emerging to keep the price from realizing its natural bias toward demonetizing every financial asset in the world due to its superiority in every way. I think that the delivery thing is the most important to the fact that um, prices on gold can be manipulated because nobody, very few people, it's only central banks. And even then they don't like to take delivery of gold because it's very expensive to transport in, in mass. If it's one ounce, okay, that's okay. But to take delivery of a ton, you also saw this, for example, during the COVID lockdown with oil. Oil is very mm -hmm. difficult as well to take delivery of. Well, that's why oil prices went negative in the US because there was an ETF sort of product on a futures contract of oil and it it got to the point and you know the pricing of of oil where the the expiry the expiration of the contract they had to roll it over and in order to do it like it, basically they had to take delivery of oil and nobody had the ability to take delivery of oil at that moment so mm -hmm. it, it, the price went negative because of that so that showed the scheme. If you can't take delivery of the item, it all blows away. Well, with Bitcoin, it's very easy to take delivery of no matter how much. If it was like $10 billion worth, you could take delivery just as easily as if it's $10 worth. Yeah, I remember when I was working on Wall Street, there would always be these stories about that, that you'd see in the Wall Street Journal that some farmer in the Midwest, you know, didn't roll over a futures contract and was forced to take delivery of 50,000 tons of wheat or something. It just showed up, you know, it's like, you own it, you know, they ship it, you know, it's like, oh man, I messed up that order. But that's not the case with, uh, with, with Bitcoin for the reasons that we've just discussed. So I would say the short answer again is no. Thanks for recapping there. And um, what other risks or dangers can we face with BlackRock coming into the the party now? Well, the BlackRock is a useful idiot, right? Because um, they've got a, a lot of money and they're going to buy a lot of Bitcoin. And so for 12 years, we have front run BlackRock. This is the, really the first time, again, another first in history where the the average person got in there a decade before Wall Street did. Right. So when we were doing Kaiser report, Bitcoin was a dollar. We talked about it as a new asset class. We said that it had the potential to go to hundred thousand dollars. A lot of people we know bought, you know, a thousand Bitcoin, two thousand Bitcoin for, for you know, um, a couple of thousand bucks. Right. They're sitting on forty, fifty, sixty million dollars. So, and they're very appreciative. They let us. They send us thank you notes all the time. In our journey through the intricacies of market manipulation and the ascendancy of Bitcoin. We've uncovered the profound challenges and opportunities presented by this digital revolution. Bitcoin's ability to facilitate the frictionless movement of vast sums of money, 
its defiance against traditional market manipulations, and its potential to demonetize every financial asset highlight a pivotal moment in financial history. Max Kaiser's insights shed light on the unique advantages of Bitcoin over traditional assets like gold and oil, especially in terms of ease of delivery and resistance to manipulation. Moreover, the entry of institutional investors like BlackRock into the cryptocurrency space marks a significant milestone, signaling a shift in the balance of financial power from Wall Street to the individual investor. Thank you for joining us on Unscripted Crypto. If you found this analysis enlightening, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our video.